Good morning, and welcome to St. Matthew's. On this Remembrance Sunday, we gather to worship Almighty God, to take refuge in him and his very great and precious promises. We call one another to worship in the words of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We sing that psalm together as we sing God is our strength and refuge. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please stand? O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord in the words of Psalm 95. 
O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness when your forebears tested me, put me to the proof though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Bible reading today is from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are fully established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. For we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the, com the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to say together the song of Zechariah as he looks to the tender compassion of our God, dawning from on high, giving light and life and peace. And we then remain standing for the act of remembrance. Please stand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord.
to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we give our today. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for all who lay down their lives for the cause of freedom, justice, and peace. May the memory of their devotion ever be an example and inspiration to us, that we may serve you faithfully all the days of our life. We pray also for those who continue to suffer through war or terror, the bereaved, the injured, the widow and the orphan, and pray that they will know the comfort of your love, the strength of faith, and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection through him who died and is alive forevermore, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
affirm our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice, and truth. Bless Her Majesty the Queen, her government and parliament, as they govern our nation. Bring reconciliation and peace to our province, and guide the politicians elected to the Stormont Assembly to work together for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Bless and protect Her Majesty's forces, the police service of Northern Ireland, and the prison service as they serve the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a world of fear and terror, we pray for our enemies, and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Restrain the hands of wicked men and women who seek to bring destruction and devastation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and your support. Surround them with your love and strengthen them with your grace. And Lord, we pray for all who are ill today. Bring your healing power and minister to their needs. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow and bring us in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in this prayer for peace. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all people in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, courage and hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Amen. Tonight we have the first of our uh, restored monthly praise services uh, with the praise group Socially Distanced. Uh, that's at 6.30 tonight in the hall and you're very welcome to come along to that. Next Sunday we have Sunday School at 10, at morning service back at the usual time of 11, Confirmation Group at 5 and Holy Communion at 6.30. Well, the Union meets this Wednesday night at 8 o'clock in the main hall, and there's also a ladies' um, coffee, cake, chat at this Saturday morning in the main hall at 10.30. Confirmation is quickly approaching on Tuesday the 23rd at 7.30 here in church. Uh, you'll understand that we're limited with seating, uh, and we want to make sure that the candidates and their guests uh, can get in, uh, but we may have a few seats available for others to come along and to support the candidates. Uh, so please do pray for them uh, as they prepare for next week. As our minds turn towards Christmas, we're hoping to support the Salvation Army Toy Appeal again this year. Uh, the last day for donations will be Sunday the 5th of December. Uh, donations of new Unwrapped toys and gifts for children and teenagers can be left in the hall uh, or at the font on Sunday mornings. And the hall will also be open on Saturday the 4th of December from 10 until noon uh, to receive donations. Now before we turn again to Second Peter, uh, we stand to sing that God has spoken by his prophets. <laughs>
Lord God, we thank you that you have spoken and that you are speaking to us now. Help us, Lord, to hear and to understand that we may hold on to your precious promises through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Claude Stanley Charles died just over 10 years ago in May 2011. At aged 110, he was the last living combatant of World War I and had served in both world wars. And less than a year later, in February 2012, the last veteran of World War I died, also aged 110. Florence Beatrice Green, who had served in the Women's Royal Air Force. And with their deaths, our last living link with the First World War came to an end. So while we gather today at war memorials and hold acts of remembrance, none of us can personally remember World War I for ourselves. In due course, with the rolling of the years, World War II will also someday pass from living memory. And so the experiences of the surviving veterans are sought out in interviews, particularly around Remembrance Sunday. While some of their memories may be painful, they can help us to remember what we haven't known or experienced for ourselves. On this Remembrance Sunday, Peter is keen for his readers to remember. You see, just like the diminishing band of veterans, Peter and his elite group are passing away, their experiences being lost to living memory. So how can his readers remember? And how can we remember 2,000 years on? Well, that's what he moves on to in his letter in this morning's reading. In chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, we see the emphasis on remembering in the various ways that he puts it. He says there in verse 12, So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. So what's he talking about? What are these things? Well, If you were here with us last week and you're asking that question, then you've just illustrated why Peter needs to remind his readers. These things are all that we saw in verses 1 to 11. The things that we have received, a faith as precious as the faith of the apostles, everything we need for life and godliness, and God's very great and precious promises but also the things that we need to make every effort, to put our effort into. Adding to our faith goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. As we saw last week, as we grow in these things, we can make our calling and election sure. And Peter needs to remind us of these things because we so quickly and so easily forget. Perhaps you've been looking for ways to grow in these qualities over the past week. But would that be the case in another week's time, in another month's time, when uh, this passage and last week's passage has disappeared from our memory? Peter says you know them, that you're established in them, but don't forget them. 
There's another remember term in verse 13. He says, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. You see, Peter and the other apostles, they're dying out. All of them will be martyred, except for John, who will live to a ripe old age. So while Peter is still living, he wants to refresh their memory. And he wants to do the same after he has died, verse 15. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Peter wants us to remember to keep growing. Don't think, yeah, we looked at that last week. Let's look at something else now. Peter says, keep coming back to these qualities I wonder, could you write them down on a card and leave them in your Bible or beside a mirror or somewhere that you'll see them every day? Could you set a reminder on your phone to track your progress? Now, why is Peter so insistent on remembering to keep growing? Why does he want us to grow in grace and knowledge? It's because he has already seen the glory of of the king. He knows what lies ahead of us. He has experienced a glimpse of the eternal kingdom to which we're moving. Verse 16, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Some people might have thought that the whole story of Jesus was just a tall tale, something made up, cleverly invented perhaps, but just a story. And especially that bit about the future, you know, Jesus returning and bringing in his kingdom, isn't that just pie in the sky when you die? The opiate of the people, as Marx thought. Promise them a great future, and they'll put up with anything in the meantime. But where Peter says there about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus, that word coming is a technical word at parousia, which speaks not about Jesus' first coming as a baby at Bethlehem, but about his return, his second coming his return in glory. Peter says that it isn't made up. It will happen. Jesus will return because we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. (coughs) Peter is talking about the transfiguration. When he and James and John were on the mountain with Jesus, when Jesus' face and clothing were transformed so that they shone brightly with glory, dazzling white. Peter, James, and John were not only eyewitnesses seeing his glory, but they were also ear witnesses hearing the voice from heaven, God the Father saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And so having seen Jesus in all his glory, Peter knows that Jesus will return in all his glory for all to see. Peter was sure that it wasn't a cleverly invented story. He was there, he saw, he heard, and he writes it down so that we too can be sure. He wants us to remember to keep growing because of the eyewitness testimony. But you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's all right for Peter. He was there. He got to see Jesus like that. We just have to take his word for it. Is that all we have to go on? The word of Peter and James and John. Well, thankfully not. 
You see, as Peter goes on, he says that we have something made more certain, something that we can rely on, something that will help us as we look forward to the return of the Lord Jesus, as we remember to grow because of the eyewitness testimony and because of the words of the prophets. Peter points us to the Old Testament scriptures, to the word of the prophets. And you might think to yourself, oh, you see, you've been uh, trying to read the Old Testament, but you find it such a struggle. You do try, you, you do read it, but you don't always understand what it's saying. And yet Peter says that this is something made more certain. But Peter gives us a picture there in verse 19. The word of the prophets is like a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. You see, the day is coming. The glory of Christ is dawning. But until then, we have a lamp, a light. The scriptures point us to the dawning of the day, to the coming of the morning star, the return of the Lord Jesus. In over 300 different scriptures, the birth, life, death, and resurrection, and return of Jesus, are foretold in great detail. The life of Jesus fulfills each one of them. But it wasn't that, you know, someone followed Jesus around and then wrote the Old Testament to make it look as if it had predicted him. No, the Old Testament had been finished about 500 years before Jesus was born. So how was that possible? How did they do it? Verse 21. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are God-given, inspired by the Holy Spirit to point us to Jesus. And by that, to encourage us to grow in godliness as we wait for his glory. Now, why does Peter tell us this about the scriptures, about the word of the prophets? What does he want us to do with it? He tells us there in verse 19, and you will do well to pay attention to it. Are we walking by the light that we have while we're in the darkness waiting for the day to dawn? Or are we stumbling about in the darkness, not using the light that God has given us? It's my hope that we, as a church family, that will take on a challenge to read through the whole Bible in 2022. I'm hoping to produce a reading plan that will help us do that bit by bit, day by day. But when we come to do that, or when you read your Bible, do we just read it so that we can say, yep, put a tick beside it, I've read today's passage? Or are we paying attention, listening carefully to what is being said, to what God is saying to us? Peter wants us to read the Bible, to pay attention to it, not out of guilt, not out of duty, uh, saying this is something I have to do, but rather realizing that this is God speaking, God giving us light for our path, not I have to do this, but I get to do this. I get to spend time with God 
hearing him speak to me, showing at me how to grow in godliness as I wait for the return of his son. Would that be a change in how we approach our Bible? Asking God to speak to us, thinking about what we read, what God is saying to us through it. Peter wants us to remember to grow in godliness because of the eyewitness testimony of Jesus' glory and the word of the prophets pointing the way. On this day of remembering, Let's not forget this reminder. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are crowned with glory, just as the prophets had said. Help us to remember all that you have done for us and to grow in godliness as we wait for your glory to be revealed. May we know your grace this week as we walk with you. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn rejoices in our faithful God. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love. 
defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.